What's up guys welcome back to the channel I know if you read the title there you're probably thinking finesse frog fishing that's the most power fishing move there is is a frog right well I have a little bit different setup that I want to talk to you guys about look power fishing with a frog power big heavy rod big heavy line that is perfect you know that that's great for heavy cover in Indiana, our grass, we don't have a lot of heavy, heavy grass. I mean, there's places, yes, I'm sure there's places that, that are, but most of the areas that I fish, it's a lot of sparse grass, scattered grass that just comes up and barely mats on top. Um, and this finesse type frog setup seems to work really, really well for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing I got is my all-time favorite frog, and that is a Booyah Poppin' Pad Crasher. That's the Poppin' Pad Crasher. Now, there is a couple little modifications that I will make to this frog. The first thing I do when I get this out of the package, I want a frog that's going to walk side to side really good. So, you know, the old school trick, everybody knows it. You trim one leg just a little shorter than the other one, about a half inch shorter. These legs come a little longer. In the package and I'll go ahead and shorten them up a little bit and then obviously one just a little bit shorter that really helps that frog walk second thing is I do tie a loop knot um, this loop knot does help that frog walk side to side uh, the next thing that I do is soon as I get it out of the package these hooks really kind of come compressed first thing I do is I get a hold of this and I really kind of bend them hooks out as much as I can when this frog collapses, I want to get as much of this hook exposed. Now, I'd prefer them to be a little farther apart um, whenever I'm, I'm driving that hook in. Sometimes if this frog gets twisted, you might only get one hook in them. So the farther apart I have those hooks, the more area that it covers. Uh, if I'm fishing heavier grass or uh, you know heavier matted vegetation, I will occasionally take a couple little split shot and I push them just up inside there. I'll take this little split shot, I'll push it all the way up inside there. And what that does is two things. One, it adds a little noise to the bait, adds a little rattle. Second thing that it does, it makes this frog a little heavier so you can cast it a long way. And then the other thing that it does is it, it especially in heavy matted vegetation, it creates a more weight. And th basically this frog has to move more of that, uh, that grass or that matted vegetation on top, duckweed, uh, whatever it might be. So therefore, if there's any fish that are up underneath that mat that are getting heat from that mat or laying up underneath of it, they're more likely to feel this frog moving or see this frog moving because of the disturbance it creates if the frog's a little heavier. Okay, let's go to the rod and reel setup. Um, I'll tell you why I call this a finesse setup. This is not a broomstick. Most frog setups, you see these guys throwing on big, heavy rods, and, and I don't. I like it on a six foot eight, medium heavy, fast. Um, I am a slack line hook setter, so I don't need a broomstick of a rod. I just need a rod that gives me a little forgiveness because when I get that bite, I'm going to jack them. I am going to hit them hard. Uh, and, and with braid, you don't have to. Um, or you shouldn't have to. And if you're in really heavy cover, that's a different story. But this is for more sparse, more open water stuff. That's why it's more finessey. I throw this on a Berkley X9. I like a nine strand braid or an eight strand braid when I'm frog fishing, especially more open water because it's a little more supple and I feel like it helps that frog walk a little bit better. Than, um, but this finer eight strand, nine strand braid, it goes through the guides really, really smooth and it allows me to bomb a cast out there. Um, and then I throw this on 30 pound. Uh, I know most guys throwing a frog, first thing that comes to mind is 50, 60 pound. Um, 
But I want a little bit lighter braid. I want something that I can really bomb out there, get a long cast, uh, and cover as much water as I can. So, and I let this rod take the load. You know, it's got a little bit of little bit of forgiveness in the tip, which you know allows that that rod to take the weight. Um, but that's kind of my setup. The the other thing on the reel, this is a a lose a speed spool, um, and it's just an El Cheapo from Walmart. That's I don't buy expensive reels. I tear them up too quick. These are cheap and easy to replace. Uh, but they've been good. These have been really good reels. This is a uh, seven three to one. I want to have a a gear ratio that's in the sevens uh, when I'm frog fishing because I'm using the rod to move the bait, but I need the reel to pick up the slack. So whenever I get a fish in the grass that comes up and he and he got a hold of the frog and he's pulling it down, I want to get as much slack out of that line as fast as I can, so that whenever I set that hook, I'm driving those hooks into the fish's mouth versus trying to pull three foot of slack. That high speed gear ratio does that. Now a lot of guys throw these eights and nines um, and those work great, I'm sure. I don't have any, so the old sevens work good good for me. Um, guys, that pretty much covers it. Here's a little bit of uh, some frog fishing we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, me and Hunter and my brother-in-law and my nephew went out for a little while throwing a frog and had a pretty good time. Check it out. What's up YouTube? It is Memorial Day. Hunter's on the front deck. We are frogging. Frogging. We're at Dogwood Lake, Glendale Fish and Wildlife Area. And we're going to try to catch us some on a frog today. No! I got my brother in law and my nephew back here, and they're doing some frogging too. What's up? Say what's up, Case. Can you give me a what's up? No, no, no. Nothing? He's still waking up. This place looks fishy, so let's get at it. Was there a lot of them on it? Yeah, quite a few. Golly, that was a bite and a half. Gosh. What are you using, Zach? Frog. Frog. Was there a lot of grass in that There's a little good one. There's a... That sucker hammered. In case you want to try it on this side? Uh, 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 yeah. Casey. Uh, I'm gonna Casey, get back to. What's going